This is the fifth lecture for the subject PM370, uh, Marketing Management for the BTEC Semester. And uh, in today's uh, discussion, we are going to uh, talk of a very important uh, P of the marketing mix, which is the pricing strategies and decisions. See, out of the four P's uh, of the marketing mix, uh, is the product, the base, the promotion, price stands to be the most important uh, uh, consideration because out of all the other three, this is the only one which can be considered as a revenue producer. Uh, this is to say that when all the other P's, whether it is a product or it is a place from decision or it is a promotion decision, would uh, uh, constitute a lot of costs for the company even before the product comes into the market, price is the one where uh, perhaps, you know, you can, it, it would not be an exaggeration to say that sometimes there is no cost involved. If the seller wants to decide on his uh, uh, sole decision what should be the price of the company in that case there is not a single cost uh, included in this particular segment whatever comes in is going to be revenue therefore this is actually this is where the company determines how much money they can win from the market whether they are going to stay into the market for a long run or whether they are just there for a short period of time and therefore price is considered to be that revenue producing element of the marketing mix it is important for us to understand that price constitutes of a, of a number of things. Price largely is a sum total of the components which go into the constitution of the product plus the function that the product performs. For example, if you are talking about a soap, then the, uh, we are talking about the shape, the size, the color, the ingredients, the fragrance of the soap. At the same time, we are talking about the functions. So, uh, where any other normal soap would be for about 30 to uh, 90 rupees into the market, a dove which claims it to be a, a moisturizing bar, and therefore the component would change and the function would also change, the price may go high. Uh, uh, the case is same for almost all the products across various categories, whether you are talking about uh, electronic gadgets, or we are talking about mobile phones, or we are talking about cars, or small events in particular, it would always be a sum total of functions plus components. Uh, it is important for a for a seller to realize that uh, price cannot remain same over a period of time, and thus the pricing environment in which the company operates, since it's changing, the company has to you know regularly upgrade, update, or modify the pricing patterns. Also, the first and foremost uh, a factor which affects a company's mind's uh, pricing strategy is the buyer. Since a buyer has become more uh, vigilant these days, he has become more aware. He's you know he's the one who's uh, constantly making price comparisons on the websites. Uh, he's uh, always uh, you know interested in deciding what price uh, he or she is interested in paying. And finally, uh, since something like um, getting products free is coming so bundle pricing is coming so buyer have his or her assessments of how much price uh, he or she would be willing to pay, and this is a sole consideration that the company should take into purview. As far as setting up of a price is concerned, uh, the method of setting up, setting up price ranges from company to company. If the companies are small, they have a very different method. If the companies are large enough, they have big corporate houses, then they have got a very different mechanism. Here we see that there are three different patterns of adopting it. First, if it is just a small business, if it is if it is just a small shop that a person is running, if it is his or her own business, then the person can have a, you know, it can be a single person who is determining what the price it can be. As against when it is, uh, you know, big, big companies where uh, they can appoint at least one specialist into this area, then the product line managers, the people who are actually making the products can uh, set up the price with the help of the guidance of these specialists. And thirdly, uh, in case of big corporate houses where they have got different types of customers, they are dealing, they are dealing in different areas, where they are not just restricted to the national boundaries, but they are operating elsewhere internationally also, then it is always suggested to have a separate pricing department, which consists of people who are specialists into different fields like economics and commerce etc and thus uh, the company can make uh, uh, great use of the uh, you know uh, knowledge of uh, these people who would be in the pricing department whatever it is uh, pricing is is one of the most key uh, criteria which will help you determine whether you are going to sell your product to the market or whether you are not going to be there into the market in that line, it is also important to understand that how is pricing important, what is the relevance of pricing for the company and it is here that we need to understand that pricing is directly correlated with the consumer psychology. The one who is buying the product into the market is, is, is deeply affected by what the price would be. It's, it's not that consumers are always looking out for cheap products but then they are always looking out for quality products and for that they also have a certain assessment they also have a certain benchmark and this much price they would be ready to pay. Sometimes if they are getting more than better products, then they may, may even escalate the price that they, they, they were initially.
initially planned to pay for. So you will see that there are three criteria. The first one is price quality inference, which suggests that a consumer has the habit of directly relating the price with the quality. Higher the price, higher is the perceived quality. Lower the price, lower will be the quality considered. And most of the time, if a company shifts from a high price to a low price, the consumer often associates it with a cheaper product being launched into the market and therefore price quality inferences. Second is reference prices. For almost all the products that the consumer is buying from the market, they have got certain references. They have got a particular benchmark, a ceiling level beyond which they are not ready to pay. They also have a bottom floor level beyond which they consider the products to be cheaper or they would consider the product to be of inferior quality. And therefore, reference prices are there. The consumer always try to judge a new product with these reference prices. If the new products coming into the market have got a higher prices, the consumer relates that they, are, they should be of a, of a higher quality because the existing products into the market with that price belt are very qualitative. On the other hand, vice versa. The third one is price ending, which is very popular in India these days. This is something which is known as the odd digit pricing, or this is very popularly referred to as the psychological pricing. It is here where all the products are priced, are priced into the market at the rate of 2999 or 499, where the consumer considers that it is actually less than 3000 rupees, and therefore it, it, it affects. Uh, started in India by Bata, and therefore also known as Bata pricing. Uh, when they first started selling uh, bathroom slippers and shoes at 99.99 and 299.99 rupees and then, therefore it affected the consumer psychologically positively. Later almost all the companies have adopted it. See, one needs to understand that uh, here I taken the example of a simple black t-shirt. The three manufacturers, H&M, Gap and Armani. If you see that it's, it's just a simple black t-shirt with just a label behind. If the label was not there, it would have been just a black t-shirt. But that label, this label here makes all the difference. So a simple H&M t-shirt would price you somewhere around $1.08. A Gap t-shirt would cost you somewhere around $1.15 but there is something like an Armani t-shirt which would produce, cost you somewhere around $1.275 Roughly uh, starting from 560 rupees you can go up to somewhere around 18,000 bucks So that's that's where the difference comes in How do companies can charge different prices and the name and the moment the name Armani stuck to it a consumer is assured of the quality That is what's the psychological price, uh, uh, correlation of the consumer in the second step, we need to understand how does the company sets the pricing. So the setting of pricing is a six step procedure which begins from determination of the pricing objective which uh, goes up to finding out what would be the demand level into the market, estimate the costs, competitor analysis, pricing method uh, evaluation and select the final pricing method. So objectives, there can be a range of objectives. The company may be primarily looking out for survival or the company would want to maximize their profit or maximize their market share. The company would want to skim the market or the company would want to establish themselves as a product quality leader or there can be others like the company would want to just be there into the market, the company would want to maintain their share into the market and some other things like that. But then as the objective changes, so would the, so would the strategy adopted. The second step is the determination of the demand. So the companies have to find out how many people are there in the market who are going to stick with your product even if you increase your price by a bit or how many consumers more would be added to your company's portfolio if you reduce the price by a bit. That is where the price sensitivity is being tested. The company is also interested in finding out that whether your product is a necessary product or whether your product is a luxury product such that a rise in the price is going to cause a fall in the demand. Whether your product is a, is a, is a you know, exception to the law of demand that is also to be uh, understood here. Plus, the company is interested in finding out uh, would the consumer shift to the substitute goods or the complementary goods, uh, uh, sorry, would shift the substitute goods if you change or increase the price or would the, the sale of the complementary goods uh, be affected if there is a rise in the price of your product. That is uh, all calculations are done in here. Once this is done, the company reaches at a very important uh, uh, zone where they have to actually estimate how, many, how much cost they are going to incur. If you see here, it's a figure which shows that there is a red box which constitutes the cost. Then this is the amount of profit that the company wants to charge. If the, if the profit is minimal, then we can say that the company is just charging the basic price. And this is here where the company wants to penetrate the market. But if the company wants to have a large profit proportion in comparison to the cost, then we can say that the price would be set here, which is known as the ceiling price, the maximum uh, possible price. And this is here where the company is trying to skim. Uh, well, they are uh, trying to use a price skimming. And therefore, uh, cost plus the amount of profit that the company wants to earn from the market would help you determine your floor pricing or your ceiling 
pricing. It is very important to understand that a company cannot just go into the market and fix up any price ceiling as for their own interest. It would always depend on the largest amount of demand. This is the level at which the demand exists within the market, the highest number of people who are willing to buy. And therefore, the company has to keep into consideration that demand level also. Once this is done, the company is interested in finding out how much different types of costs they are incurring. Largely, there are two types of costs. One is known as the fixed cost, which is the cost of the plant, machinery, building, uh, land. And the second one is which is the variable cost, which varies with the passage of time. So it could be the rent, it could be the, in the power consumption, or it could be the fuel consumption, or it could be wages that you are paying. So they will be variable cost. The sum total of fixed cost plus the variable cost would result into the total cost, which will help the company de decide how much they are already investing into the project and above which uh, they are going to you know, expect from the market is going to be their profit. Before going into that zone, what is important is to analyze what the competitor is offering, what is his offer like, whether he is uh, 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 you know, attractive enough, whether the consumer is already bitter. The company needs to find out where they need to stand vis-a-vis -vis the competition. Do they want to just stand parallel to him, that is at par with him, or do they, do they, do they want to you know, step yourself uh, um, a step higher and become premium, or do they want to step themselves low and, and go into discounted rate. Therefore, they need to understand what are the competitor's costs, what are the price that he is charging from the market and what, how would the consumer react if, if they do a little change vis-a-vis -vis the competition. And most important is that when the consumer judges two attributes, it should be you know, worth to the customer. Once this is done, we come into one of the most important stages when the company has to make a selection from amongst the different pricing methods available. A range of pricing methods are there, uh, starting from marker pricing, or the target return pricing, or the perceived value pricing, or the value pricing, or going rate pricing, or the auction type. All these methods are the ones which are commonly used into the market these days. If you just try to see, the market pricing suggests that the company would decide the unit cost on the basis of the variable cost that they are incurring plus the fixed cost that they have uh, invested upon the unit sales that they want to sell into the market. So we see that the variable cost is dollar ten plus they have invested a sum of three lakh dollars. Uh, the total unit they have made is fifty thousand. So dollar ten plus this figure will give you a price rate of dollar sixty. So the marker pricing that is the unit cost. The marker pricing would be the unit cost upon one minus desired return on sales. So they are expecting a two percent. Uh, return on sales, therefore, dollar sixteen upon one minus zero point two will give you dollar twenty. That is going to be the marker pricing. Marker pricing helps the company to set a price uh, above the cost that they have already incurred into the market, and therefore, this is also known as the add-on pricing or the margin pricing. The second is the target return pricing. On the total amount that the company has invested into the company, the company expects a certain return, and therefore that is done here. So, uh, in the, the, the method formula for the target return pricing is unit cost plus desired return into invested capital upon unit sales. So, if a company is invested dollar sixteen as a unit cost, then if the, if the company's desired rate of return is twenty percent into the invested capital is uh, one crore upon the, the sales that they have already made. So, it is dollar sixteen plus twenty percent into one uh, ten lakhs upon fifty thousand. That gives you dollar twenty. So, anyway, so it is just going to follow the same. So, either go by the capital return pricing method, or if you go by the margin pricing method, the company would want to know how much uh, price per unit that they can charge from the market in order to reach their desired rate of return. The third is the customer's pricing method. As against the formula methods, these are more qualitative methods. Here, the company tries to analyze how the consumer perceives their prices. So, the company would try to analyze uh, how much money the consumer is willing to pay for the performance, how much is he is ready to pay for the warranty, the different factors which constitute the, the product's price, the customer support that the company would extend, or the reputation or goodwill that the company is giving. And therefore, we can see that the company is always, uh, consumers are interested more in the performance part, they are in, in, interested in the reputation of the goodwill part, and therefore, the company charges different uh, uh, you know, components for these different parameters, and that would add up to the customer's perceived value. Uh, the next is the value pricing method. Here, the company has got two methods. Either they can go into something which is known as the their return top, the right corner ETF, which is everyday low prices. 
So uh, you know, almost all the stores have this method. The retail stores where they price, uh, you know, there are certain uh, products which are priced at the lowest price of for the particular week, or the company is going to this, which is the high low pricing. Some days the products can be high, some days the products price can be extremely low, which is also a very common strategy. Value pricing is a consumer has a perception about the level of quality. Okay, and the company would have to realize how much money that they are going to price. So we can see that there is a pricing one, which is uh, 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 you know, it, it is the quality of it's very high, and the competitor's prices are very low. So uh, that is a consideration. A consumer always has a certain benchmark as to the amount by which he or she is willing to pay. That determines how much value we associate with that particular product, and therefore the value price. Going rate pricing, this is another very common method. It, it actually happens uh, on the basis of following the leader. So what the others are charging, the company also wants to class the same. This is also known as the competitor's pricing. Going rate pricing has been termed as because this is the prevailing rate which is going on in the market and therefore you also choose to become a part of the group and do not set your own different prices. That's the going rate pricing. Uh, in addition to these, there are certain other types of pricing methods also. We have got the penetration pricing where I told you initially when we were talking about marketing mix that the company can decides to keep the price very low so as to penetrate the market deepest and therefore be available everywhere and therefore the products are available affordable for everybody. Or else on the other extreme, the company can choose to keep a skimming pricing but the company can charge a very very high price and therefore they are just trying to target the thinning sections of the market and then only the classes would be able to afford them. The company can also go for premium pricing uh, which is more, more than what the competitor is charging or the company can go for a discount pricing which is much lesser to what the consumer competitor is charging. Uh, this this we have already studied which is known as the competitor's parity. In the next slide, the, consu the consumer tries to make a final selection of the uh, 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 final price that he or she is going to charge from the market. It is important for a company to understand that selecting a final price is not a very very easy thing to be taken very lightly. It's because once the price is chosen, this would communicate a number of things to your consumers. The first important thing that it is going to communicate to the consumer is that uh, what uh, Orbit or, or in what level or in what hierarchical state are you going to affix your product in the minds of the consumers? Are you going to establish yourself as a qualitative product or you're going to establish yourself as just another inferior product as in the case it is just a me too product and therefore the company has to consider that the price that you charge today is going to communicate volumes about the quality that a consumer is going to expect from you. And therefore if you are charging a product which is say at about a 23 rupees for a soap then the consumer is going to expect you to be a, a, a of, of a premium quality or if you are just pricing yourself to be a 8 rupees so then the consumer would not have much expectations from you. The second is impact on others. It's not just about the competitors or the consumers. It is about the uh, complementary goods industry as well. It is about the raw material market as well. It is about the distributor market as well. Everybody, you know, uh, it is easy to decide that you are going to sell a premium product into the market, but then you would also have to find out those distributors or the middlemen or the intermediaries who would be willing to help you out into this. Because reaching the end consumers is not an individual affair. You are going to need, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 an army of people who would assist you into this task. And if you do not find people who are going to be in that uh, army, then it is difficult to please the consumers. That's because if you have already charged a rupees 23 rupees for a store, then uh, how much margin does the distributor has to add more in order to you know uh, earn his middle level commission? Because then if he adds a 5 rupees for himself, then soap's price would go up to 28 rupees. Would a consumer then be willing to buy a 28 rupees soap? That's a question which needs to be analyzed. And therefore, the company has to find, find out how much people are getting impacted. Again, if you are buying uh, you know, raw materials from somewhere, you also have to find out that uh, that quality of raw material should be available into the market. You know, uh, so that you can match the quality of your output as well. The next is the gain and risk sharing. As I've just now told you, this is not an individual affair. A business is a is a system where a number of parties are integrated at the back and which are integrated at the forward. Everybody has got a certain risk and a profit involved in doing this. And therefore everybody has to share into it. They are not just there to share the risk, but they are there. They are not just there to share the gains, but they are there to share the risk also. And therefore the company has to make sure before coming into the market what range of price they are choosing. Okay, again, I say a range of price because this will help the company 
not to uh, you know associate themselves with just one private figure they should have a liberty of moving just a little here and just a little there so that they, they you know they can uh, uh, they they can give that advantage to the consumer as well and therefore uh, the pricing policy has to be uh, you know very very flexible so that it takes into consideration all these factors if tomorrow the prices of the raw materials are being fall down then the company should be willing to pass on this advantage to the consumer as well on the other hand if the price of the the raw material prices go up and the company is willing to exceed the price and what it was actually initially was then they should have a logical background to uh, a reason to explain to the consumers how the same product has uh, become more pricey in just a passage of time that is what it is Okay. Uh, as we were just discussing, uh, a pricing strategy and a pricing method cannot remain stagnant for for a long period of time. That's because the environmental conditions change, as the political factors change, as the economic policies change, as the interest rate change, or as the technological advancement takes place. The companies have to adopt uh, all these and have to make certain changes in their product composition. Okay. As the product composition changes. So for the price of the product, uh, the cost factor would uh, change. If the cost factor changes, the company would have some expectations from the profit also. Since it's a vicious circle where everything is related to each other, the company has to constantly make sure that the pricing is such that uh, it should be adaptable to the changing environmental scenario. And therefore, there are four important factors which are written here. The first one is uh, geographical pricing. Uh, as the company decides to go from one area to another area, then they have to understand that the tax rates change. They understand that the environmental conditions change. They also understand that there are certain already local players which are there in the form of the competitors, and therefore price which is charged in one locality may not be acceptable to the other area. And therefore, the the company should be willing to change their price as for the different geographical territory that they are approaching to. The second is price discounts and allowances. In order to influence uh, your consumer, in order to attract him, in order to uh, induct, induce him to make a, make a quick purchase, a company should be willing to give price discounts and allowances from time to time. This will uh, not only help the company to increase their sales, but it, it will also help the company to get rid of their dead stock. The third one is promotional pricing. This can be done in order to help revive the sleeping market. If sometimes the consumers are not buying because they consider prices to be too high, the companies can give shorter promotional pricing where they can come up with um, psychological pricing like the or digital pricing, or they can come up with certain sales and certain you know limited period offers which may induce the, uh, the consumer to uh, uh, to get uh, attracted and buy uh, or say you know prepon the uh, purchase which he was. Uh, uh, about to do at a later duration. This is also known as sales promotion pricing. The fourth one, which is very important, which is known as differentiated pricing. Differentiated pricing is inter interesting and important to understand because the company at a point of time may be having a different, uh, may be having very, very different types of consumers. They may be dealing with individual consumers, they may have institutions, they may have government customers, or they may even be having international customers. And since they, they, these are different uh, types of customers who, who buy different quantity, who buy at different times, who buy for different reasons and therefore the company should also have different pricing methods for them. For example, for the government consumers there are systems of tenders and auctions, bids. For the consumers who are international there is something which is known as the international pricing and therefore the, the company would be, uh, would be interested in charging more money. There are certain uh, individual customers who would not buy in bulk but they would just buy in one or two quantities and therefore the company should have um, uh, different rates of discount for them. On the other hand, there are private institutions who may want to buy in bulk but they, they are not public bodies and therefore there would not be a system of tenders and auction but the company should be willing to order them bulk uh, discounts. Whatever it is, the, it is important for the company to understand that price cannot remain the same for a long period of time, and therefore the company should be willing. Uh, uh, the company should have enough scope in their uh, pricing uh, mechanism so that it could be quickly adapted. Because if you will not adopt, and if your competitor will do, will do so immediately, uh, you would lose the market. You would lose your original customers also, and therefore adapting the price is very very important. Then. Uh, the company also needs to be uh, vigilant in terms of uh, dealing with the price changes. Uh, that's because uh, the environment in which we are operating, there are certain things which will happen and for which we can be very proactive. But these are certain things which happen on a spur of the moment and therefore it requires certain response from our side. And therefore the first one is raising prices. If, if uh, the market is going through bad times and there is inflation to the market, if the interest rates are uh, you know, too 
high such that the consumer is not uh, willing to buy from the market, the money is becoming dearer, then what should the company do? The company should, you know, uh, uh, of course, uh, as soon as you see that your market is not doing very good and your product sales are declining, it's not at all suggested that you decrease your price because then the consumer would feel cheated. That earlier you were selling at a high price and now that this because your product is not being sold, you are ready to, you are willing to lower it down. It means that till now you have been selling him, him at, at, at an exorbitant price. Or second, your product was not that worth it for which you have been charging a high price. These are the consumer's uh, you know, uh, um, uh, responses. And therefore the company has to deal very wisely with how the prices are rising. In such cases, they can come up with certain versions, you know, change versions where they can uh, promise certain better features and uh, charge a better price than the original product. So if a consumer wants to stick with the older version, they can still go and buy that into the market. And if somebody wants to have a better feature, they would have to pay a high price in this way. You can start earning more money on some better versions. The second is certain prices. Again, you know, it happens uh, when the company can uh, approach the vice versa uh, strategy. You can start launching products which are, uh, you know, uh, which may not be having all those features, and therefore the company will come up with uh, low price versions. So uh, certain features, may be, for example, in the case of cars, um, a power steering or a power window can be, you know, cut. Therefore, which will cut the cost, and therefore the price will go down, and the consumer would uh, can buy the same product at a low price but with certain minus features. The third is competitors move. This is perhaps the most wise strategy. Uh, if you cannot just decide what you have to do, then you just have to follow your competitor. You have to follow the market leader. Just try to do what he is doing. Because you know they are the best analyzers of the market situation. If he thinks that the product uh, price can be increased, and if he increases that the market trend shows positivity, you also can follow. If he reduces the price, naturally he would have done so on the basis of certain market research and study. And if the market is if these conditions are improving, also uh, go into this area and you can cut the prices. Uh, it is here it is here that we should understand that price out of all the four P's is one of the most important uh, considerations which will help the company establish themselves into the market. It is seen that most uh, good products uh, sometimes do not do good into the market just because the pricing is not suitable for the product type. One has to understand who is your market base, who is your customer segment whom you are going to target. Are they just general public and therefore you have to keep the product price into that particular bracket or if you know that your if your consumers are uh, classic consumers and if they would be you know they, they would understand the worth of the product and would be willing to pay a higher price for it then only you can go into that particular zone otherwise it is always suggestible to keep the product prices in uh, consideration with what the consumer would be willing to pay that is all for the uh, price the pricing decisions the next term we are going to speak about the uh, place decisions